This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar exploring third-party tools that work with Apple Final Cut Pro 10. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. This excerpt is the first part of a look at Final Cut Library Manager. Final Cut Library Manager instantly displays all Final Cut Pro 10 libraries on all attached drives. From there, you can search them, sort them, clean them, clone them, create templates, add finder notes, and more. The website to learn more is arcticwhiteness.com. They have a basic version which is free, and the fully loaded all-feature version, which is what I'm demoing here, is about 24 euros or 28 US dollars. Let me show you Library Manager. This is Final Cut Library Manager, and the interface has two main sections. This is a list of all of the hard drives that have ever been opened inside Final Cut Library Manager. Those that are bright are currently connected. Those that are dimmed back have been connected, but are no longer connected, but the information of the files on them has been remembered by Library Manager, so you can find stuff even if the hard disk is not currently attached to your computer. So this is the storage. Let me just roll over second drive. Notice a small window opens to the right saying that on the second drive, which is what I principally use for my media and editing, there's 83 gigabytes of original media files, 20 gigabytes of optimized files, 1 gigabyte of proxy files, a gigabyte of optical flow, and 212 gigabytes of render files. This translates gray, the gray bar here, is the original media files, blue or media, that is optimized media, pink are proxy files, and green are render files. I can see that a fair amount of storage on my second drive is tied up with render files, whereas here on my Macintosh hard drive, it's just original media files of about 74 gig. Or the RAID that I, my principal RAID that I use for the really big projects, is I've got one and a half terabytes of original media files and only about, oh, 200 gigabytes of render files. So I can look at my hard drives and figure out how much of my space is generated media, render files, how much is original media, for instance, I can pick up a lot of space. I've got almost three terabytes free on the second drive, two and a quarter terabytes free on the RAID, but I could pick up a fair amount of space on the second drive by getting rid of render files that I no longer need. That's where the middle section comes into. This is a list of all the libraries stored on all of the checked hard drives. If I want to see what's offline, these are the libraries that are stored on a drive that I no longer have on, G-RAID with Thunderbolt or the files that were stored on transfer. Okay, But I want to see just the files that are online with me right now, so I'll check those. I can click name and I can sort alphabetically or in reverse alphabetical order, which is useful, but what's more useful is let's sort based on total size. And here I've got a file that I haven't used since April of 2016, which is taking almost 100 gigabytes of storage, of which almost all of that is render files. 88 gigabytes of render files. Well, it'd be nice if I got rid of it. I, don't, I can always recreate render files. Why am I tying up disk space for this? So I'm going to check here, and that tells me that I can get rid of those render files. They're not gone yet. I'm just flagging it to get rid of. Here, I've got a show bed. Well, I don't need that show bed. I can get rid of, there's another 43 gigabytes. Here's another version of that show bed. I don't need that. So I've sorted over 200 libraries. I've loaded the three biggest, bubbled them up to the top, and just by deleting the render files for my three biggest projects, I'm picking up almost 300 gigabytes of data. My fault, I'm doing the math wrong, it's about 175 gigabytes. We can see the totals down here. I've selected 175 gigabytes to get rid of out of 287 total. And then to get rid of it, it's easy. See this checkbox down here? I could get rid of all of my optimized files, my proxy files, and my render files. You can always get rid of render files because those are rebuilt whenever Final Cut opens that file back up again. I'm less willing to blithely get rid of optimized or proxy files, but it's as easy to do by just checking the appropriate box. To get rid of it, click 
get rid of it. It says, okay, we're going to get rid of it. You sure that's true? And I'm going to send them to the trash. And they're done. They will be trashed the next time I empty the trash. And these sizes will get updated throughout. See? They're getting trashed and getting updated. This excerpt has been the first portion of our training on Final Cut Library Manager. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com store and look for Webinar 205. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, a membership to our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,400 movies, hundreds of hours, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com membership. And thanks.